Hi friends, it's Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. For today's video, we are going to be checking in with my October budget. We're going to be taking a look at all of my spending for week three, which is October 17th through the 23rd. So we're not quite the last week of October, though we're getting there rapidly. We're going to talk all about my spending for the week. I'm going to write in all of my transactions here on a fresh expense tracker. Um, we're going to go in and highlight everything, categorize everything, and see how we're doing so far in October if we are on track to finish out the month under budget. So if you're interested in all of those things, just keep watching. So we are going to start by tracking my expenses for the week. Typically I do this over the course of multiple videos. This week we're just kind of combining everything into one. So for the sake of um, expediency, not having this video go on forever, I'm not going to go down the line of each of my transactions as I write them in. I'm just going to write them all in really quickly and then as we are highlighting I'll kind of go over everything. Just so that this video doesn't get too long, we're doing multiple steps all at once here. So yeah, I'm going to get the expenses written in, everything we spent during the last seven days and then we'll go over what I spent, how we categorize everything, and we'll get everything put into my monthly budget. By the way, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Jessie. I post new budgeting and lifestyle content here on my channel every week. Um, I did recently post in my community tab talking about how I was going to be stepping back a little tiny bit from my channel during the month of November. Um, I got some stuff that I need to prioritize, so um, you may not see me around these parts quite as often as usual. I'm known for posting five videos a week, four to five. Um, probably going to see me closer to like one to three times a week, um, and so when it comes to my budget videos, you might see that I'm like combining things, um, not going into as much detail, and that's just for the sake of the length of these videos. All right, let's go ahead and get the expenses written in for the week. I like to use a new expense tracker for each week of the month. This is the expense tracker from my Pop of Plaid collection, which is available in my Etsy shop. It was my release for October. Um, all of my worksheets that you're going to see today are available for sale in my shop. They're all digital downloads, so you can download them and print them as many times as you want. So... We did a ton of spending, and as you can see, we did a ton of eating out here. Um, throughout the first kind of six days of the week, we didn't go grocery shopping. We were trying to make what we had in the cabinet and in the fridge work for the week, and honestly, we should have gone shopping sooner because we found ourselves lacking a lot. We did a lot of eating out because of that. But I feel like in the past we would have spent a ton of money on groceries and then still eaten out. So really the fact that we ate out instead of doing groceries is not ideal, right? But it's better than doing both. So we did a lot of eating out here and there, mostly for like lunches. <coughs> Excuse me, we've been trying to do that. Like if we're gonna eat out, we try to do either a breakfast or a lunch because it's much cheaper than my family of four going out for dinner. So we did do a few of those um, things, quick like drive-through trips here and there. Um, we had a Nespresso order that I placed that came out of our food budget. Um, and then we, at the end of the week, the very last day of this kind of tracking period, I finally went grocery shopping. So the sheer amount of food spending you're going to see here when I add everything up is probably going to make someone gasp, but realistically, I don't anticipate us doing any more food shopping or eating out for the rest of the month. 
Um, if we do, it'll just be a, you know, very small amount. So while this number is going to be staggering, um, I think we're still going to be okay in terms of our budget. So let me grab out my highlighters so we can get um, things categorized here. I've already sort of categorized them a little bit, but I like to do my color coding. It helps to keep me on track. So we're going to do this for debt. We're going to do this one for gas. We're going to do yellow for food. We did have some unbudgeted items and those I'm going to do in um, this green just because it's drastically different from everything else I'm using. So food, debt, unbudgeted, and gas is everything. So we just need those four colors. So I'm going to go down the list, highlighting as I go and adding things up on my handy dandy calculator here so that we can get some totals. And obviously food is the vast majority of it. So we had 708 at McDonald's. $1.42 at Walmart. I ran in just to grab um, something. I don't even remember. Something we needed for dinner that night. $17.41 at Burger King. China Club was $12.92. And this was actually Eric took his mom some lunch. She was having a bad day and he surprised her with her favorite meal. Um... So that was nice of him. 52 at Nespresso. I had to get the new peppermint pinwheel pods and I needed to stock up on a few other of my favorite pods while I was at it. 14.83 at my husband's favorite deli. He got lunch at work one day. Um, and then he went to the bagel factory and picked us up some beautiful fresh baked bagels. Since he was in the area, he doesn't get up that way often, but when he's there, he always goes to Star Deli for lunch and then gets us the bagel factory. Um, then we went to China Club for ourselves because I decided that sounded good when he was talking about taking his mom there for lunch. Uh, Tim Hortons for 1636. This was a corner store for a bag of ice while we were camping. Um, then we've got $15.87 at Amazon, which was not food, but was some hair products. You guys know I combine our household and grocery budgets. And then lastly, finally, we went and did our grocery shopping for $203.84. was actually more than that. If you watched that grocery haul, I spent about $280, bucks, but I did have some rewards points that I was able to use. So the amount that came out of our pocket was only $203.84. And so for the week, we spent a grand total of $381.41, which is a lot, but... I think it'll be okay. I think we're still going to be under budget overall. So far, anyway. All right, the unbudgeted items. We very, very rarely have unbudgeted items, but this was propane. We had a friend of ours give us a 100-gallon propane tank, and that was something that we had on our list of things to buy. And he had an extra one, and he was moving, so he gave it to us. Um, which saved us a lot of money in the long run. We just had to get it filled and we had to buy um, an adapter for it. So that's what these two transactions were. So it's never ideal to have unbudgeted expenses, especially in the neighborhood of $123.39. But overall, that's way less than having to buy a propane tank ourselves. So we could have waited and budgeted for this and filled this in November, but we just went ahead and did it. And so we'll have to come up with that $123.39 somehow. Don't know how yet, but we're going to make it work. All right, debt. These were minimum payments on things that needed to be paid this week. So we have the minimum payment on our first merchant's bank card, which was less than we thought, which was nice. Um, my Subaru payment 
We always pay six fifty. And Ashley for a total of eight ninety eight in debt payments this week. And lastly, I had to put gas in my car and it took $40 to fill me up. So that takes care of that. In addition to this, we also did some cash spending from our cash envelopes as always. Um, and this is usually where I would end this video and call it done. But we're just going to keep right on rolling and I'm going to pull this guy out. And we're going to use this information to fill in my budget for the month. If you've never seen my two page hybrid budget, this is it. It's a great budgeting method. Works really great for me. It allows me to track things monthly and keep track of our weekly variable spending all in one two page spread so I don't have to flip back and forth a ton. Um, I, of course, use other worksheets from my collection to supplement this, but if you wanted to do something real bare bones, you could easily just use these two pages and do your entire budget for the month. Um, all right, let's really quickly go ahead and fill in the debt first, or did I already do that? Oh no, I didn't. Okay. So right here is where I keep track of my debt payments. That's these three payments that I made here. So for Subaru, can you guys see what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. For Subaru, we budgeted $650. That is what we spent. For Ashley, we budgeted $158, but the amount that was due was $128. So that's under budget, which is nice. That'll help offset some of these unbudgeted expenses. Um, and then First Merchants Bank also came in lower than we thought. We budgeted $150, and it was only $120. That's all of the debt payments we intend to make this month. So I'm going to go ahead and get a total here. $200 plus $150 plus 650 plus 128 plus 120 is a total of $1,248. So of that $1,308 that we budgeted for the month, we only spent $1,248, which is nice. Okay, so that takes care of the debt payments. Now let's talk about... Um, our week three variable spending. So this is basically like all of my fixed expenses here, all of my bills that come in monthly, and then our overall budget for our variable expenses. So like for food for the month of October, I budgeted $1,200. And how I keep track of how much we've spent is using these weekly sections. So I write in all of my variable categories which are food, gas, my husband's spending, my spending, my son Austin's allowance, and miscellaneous. And of course this week, we did have some unbudgeted, so that has to get accounted for here as well. And then I just write in how much we spent. I take what we were remaining in that category from the previous week, and I subtract that out and get us a new remaining balance. So for food this week, we've already done the math. We know that I spent $381.41. Last time I checked in, we had $625.73 remaining of our $1,200 budget for the month. So if I take the $625.73 that we had and I subtract the 381.41 that we spent this week, we still have $244 with 32 cents remaining in our food budget for the last six days of the month. That's amazing, you guys. Like I said, we just went grocery shopping on Monday the 24th, is that what that was? Um, and really stocked up. So I actually don't expect that we will have to spend 
much at all of this 244.32 that we have remaining. So we'll have to see how the last six days of the month go, but we potentially could come in way under budget this month, which is amazing because we haven't done that in ages. We are always over budget, but we really tried hard. I know it doesn't seem like it with all of those eating out transactions that I wrote in here, but we really tried hard to cut back on our eating out expenses. Um, and I think that's really helped. I think at the end of the month, I'm going to go in because we combined all of our grocery shopping and all of our eating out and all of our household items into this one food budget here of $1,200. Um, it doesn't really give me a good indication on the ratio of what was spent in each of those categories. So I might go back and look at my expense trackers at the end of the month and just figure out how much of that was eating out, how much of that was groceries, how much of that, well, it's kind of hard to tell how much was household because a lot of times the household items and the grocery items get put on the same transaction. We always go to Walmart, but I definitely can see how much of that was eating out. And I guarantee we spent significantly less this month than we have in previous months. And I'm very, very proud of us for that. It has it been perfect? Obviously not. There was a lot of eating out this week, but it's been way better. I mean, there have definitely been months where we've spent four to five hundred dollars on eating out, and I don't think that we are anywhere near that this month. Okay, enough with the rambling. For gas, we spent forty dollars this week. Last time we checked in, we had sixty nine seventy six remaining. Minus forty means we have twenty nine seventy six remaining in our overall gas budget for the month. Just filled up on Monday. So we've got about a week left. Um, so obviously 2976 is not enough to fill my gas tank, but it is enough to top it off if I need to. So we'll have to kind of see whether or not we can come in under budget for gas, but it'll be close. All right, for my husband, he always gets $60 a week. So $60, last time we checked in, he had 120. So that means he's got $60 left. Um, you know, we always do our cash, um, stuffing, or I give him his cash on Tuesdays. He's got one payday left in the month, and he's got $60 left, so that's perfect. Same with me, although all of my spending money is going straight to pay for a big purchase that I made. I bought a Shark Flex style, which isn't even going to ship out for another few weeks, so... By the time that ships out and my card is charged, um, I should have enough money set aside for that. So that's awesome. Um, it's not a pre-order. They were back-ordered. So um, I ordered it on the 16th of October, and Shark tells me that it probably won't ship until the 16th of November. So by then, I should have more than enough to cover that big transaction which makes me feel really good. Anyway, I've got $40 left in my till that I will give myself on Tuesday. And by the time you guys are seeing this, um, that Tuesday has come and gone. I'm filming this a little bit late actually, but um, suffice it to say, I don't anticipate us going over our spending money limit. Um, Austin, we already know, I gave him his money at the beginning of the month, so his is gone. For miscellaneous, we had $40 that I had given us in cash and we did spend that $40. So we have just $40 left. And then unbudgeted, unfortunately, that's not something we budget for. Um, so we spent $123.39. So that means I'm gonna need to write in an unbudgeted line item here. Um, and I think I'm gonna stick it down under my subtotal that will have to come out of um, any money we have left over before I stuff my sinking funds and do any savings. Um, obviously we didn't budget for it, but we will have an actual total here, but I'm not gonna fill that in just in case we have any unbudgeted ex expenses in that last week of the month, though I don't anticipate that. Okay, so where are we then? We still have a few bills that need to come out. Motorcycle insurance, car insurance, and Netflix. We're waiting on those 
transactions to happen in the last couple of days of the month. Um, we still have quite a bit of money left. So let me go ahead and get totals. Although the totals don't really matter. Um, 381, 41, plus 40, plus 60, plus 40, plus 40, plus 123, 39. We spent a total of 68480. And what do we have remaining? See, this is going to be a little bit off because of the unbudgeted. So maybe I'll just subtract that from what we have remaining overall for our variable expenses. Maybe some of this underspending in our variable categories can cover this unbudgeted expense. So we had 244.32 remaining in groceries, 29.76 remaining in gas, 60 for Eric, 40 for myself, 40 for miscellaneous. That's 414.08 remaining in our variable categories if we subtract out that unbudgeted expense that means we technically only have 290 69 remaining which hopefully will be enough um i have a set budget for each of my categories as you can see here for food it's 1200 for gas it's 240 for spending it's 500 Ultimately, I want to stick to those goals, right? But if I were to come in a little bit under budget in our food category and a little bit over budget in one of these other categories, if it balances out and overall the total amount that I spent comes in under budget, I'll still be okay with that. Like, obviously, I want to hit these goals, um, but, you know, if we're a little bit over in one area, a little bit under in another area, and they cancel each other out, I'm okay with that. So we had this unbudgeted expense, but so far we can cover it with what we'll have left over in some of these categories, but we still have a week left in the month, so we're not gonna count our chickens before they hatch. We'll have to wait and see. How I do for the last week of the month, you will see a budget closeout video on my channel next week. We'll be closing out October and then we'll get to uh, set up November's budget, which I'm really excited about. So if you would like to come along with me on this budgeting journey and see how well we wrap up October and what our plan is for November, you're definitely gonna wanna subscribe. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. That really helps out my channel. Um, leave me a comment down below. That helps me out as well. I'd love to hear from you. Check out my Etsy shop for any of the worksheets you saw me feature in today's video. Um, they're so beautiful and perfect for really any month of the year. They're not super holiday specific. I also have tons of other designs and patterns if this orange is not for you. So check it out. I'll have it linked down below. And I do have a coupon code for all of my friends here on YouTube. The coupon code YTFRIEND will take 15% off your order. So... Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support so much, and I'll see you next time.